message is called Fighting the Battle. Can you go ahead and say it with a little energy to give us, get us a good start? Here we go. Fighting the Battle. Don't you want to win the battle? I mean, if you're in a battle, don't you want to win, say? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I care. Any sporting event I'm in, even at my age, man, I don't care what it is, anything. I'm out the last year running with the uh, wide receivers, racing them. For the high school, I'm an idiot. But I had every intention, every belief, I could beat that guy. Why can't I beat him? Well, you're old. And so I raced him and pulled a hamstring. I could, I was about to die. But he only beat me by that, by that much. That's the God honest truth. By that much, only beat me. But anyway, fighting the battle. I want to win, man. Especially this battle. Let's look at it today. Here we go. Sin. That's what this little series, The Human Condition, only a two-week series. And uh, it was brought on by me going on the cruise ship. It wasn't that I saw so many sinners around me and I'm better than all these people. It, just, it was a realization that this is just us. This is humanity here. I could pull that ship up to Inglewood. The same amount of people would get on with the same problems probably. You understand, yes or no? Okay? We've all sinned, so we talked about it. Sin, we all have it, and we all what? Say that with me. We all have it, and we all what? We all do it. That's just the way it is, guys. And that's why Jesus came. If we didn't sin, and if we didn't do it, we wouldn't need Jesus. Amen? But we have, and we do, and so we must have Him. Amen? So that's why He came. The angel Gabriel at His birth. She shall bring forth a son. You shall call His name who? Which means God saves, for He shall save His people from their what? Sins. John the Baptist, when he's announcing Jesus right here, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the what? Sin of the world. Jesus Himself speaking to Nicodemus, the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not what? And we perish because of what? Sin. If we believe in Jesus, we'll have everlasting life. Amen? So sin, that's what we talked about last week. Newsflash, the battle with sin doesn't stop when you become a what? <laughs> it's just the craziest thing on the planet. Oh yeah, and I'm a Christian. Sin stops. <sighs> Are you kidding me? That doesn't happen like that at all. I don't stop living on the planet. I don't, I don't stop having flesh. I don't stop having passions. A mind, a mind that's screwed up sometimes. I didn't stop having that. Okay? Struggles. That's the way it is. Now God, now listen, it's very important. God does what? And He even what? He does. God forgives our sin, and God forgets our sin. I want, to just, I want you to see something real quick. I was just thinking about it in my office this week. God's omnipotent. It means He's all-powerful. These are attributes that only God has. He is omnipresent. That means He's ever-present everywhere. And then this word, He is omniscient, which means God is all-knowing. But I want you to know what happened at the Fellowship Church this week. I made up a new word. I did. I said, Raj, I just made up a new word. Did you know there's been a lot of human history and I just made up a new word. So I had Roger Google it. He's Googling He's laughing at the same time, going, you didn't make up a new word. I did make up a new word. So he's looking, trying to find a new word. Here's the new word. Am. Nishant. And don't you be saying it's a word. It ain't no word. We've already looked. Amniscient. Now these are the qualities of God. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. Boy, do I ever thank the Lord that He's omniscient. You know what that means? He is all forgetting. When I confess my sins, He's what? Faith and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Does the Bible say that He casts my sin as far as the east is from the west? Does it say that? Does it say He buries my sin in the depths of the sea? Does it say that? Does it say that He remembers them no more? Does it say that? Yes, it does. 
God is omniscient. How do you like that word? I like that word. Come on, yeah, praise the Lord for God. He's omniscient. Now here's the problem. You aren't. You're not omniscient. As much as things that have happened to us and we try to forget the sins that people have committed against us or hurts that's come against us, at the end of the day, if I bring that story up, if I bring that face up, or if that person comes and gets back in your face and starts to do whatever, you haven't forgotten. Not really. Only God can do that. Do you understand? He does forgive. And He forgets. We don't. Okay? Sure, we're to forgive, but that forgetting, it's not, it's not one of our qualities, guys. Now, why am I saying that? Well, there's consequences to sin. You listening or not? There's consequences. Well, God forgave me. Why didn't you? Well, God forgave me. Well, you still live on planet Earth. Are you hearing me? Yes or no? You still live on planet Earth. Well, God forgave me. I can't understand why everything's getting all screwed up. Well, it's because you made some horrible choices and it's going to happen. You understand? Yes or no? Let's talk about the message. There are always consequences. There are always consequences for our what? And our sins are really what? And things are going to what? Follow. Let's talk about it. Stay focused with me because we're going to a story. But before we get there, there's something really important I want you to understand with me. If you're going to fight the battle of sin in your life, you've got to stop doing this. I'm just going to tell you, over years of counseling and trying to help people to get past things and over things and to get victory, you must stop doing this. Pop it up. Look at that. Is that a pretty good shot right there? Say, that pretty good shot? Bullseye! Okay, flip it up. Sin means to miss the what? Mark of God's holiness. Now, are these bullseyes? Yes or no? Yes or no? Did that hit the center? Did that one hit the center? Say, missed it. Did that one miss it? Did that one miss it? Did this one miss it? Keep looking with me. Okay? Sin is not a what? Would you stop saying that? Say that with me right here. Sin is not a what? One more time. Sin is not a what? Say it. Sin is not a we say that often. Well, we all make mistakes. If you want to fight the battle of sin in your life, stop saying that. Stop thinking that. Stop believing like that. Do we all sin? Yes. Have we all sinned? Yes. But personally, when you sin, don't say or don't let yourself even think, well, you know, well, you know, we all make mistakes. Sin is not a mistake. Look at it. Sin is a what? It's a missed shot. Did the guy shooting at the target shoot at it? Did he look through the eyepiece and try to hit it? Sure he did. Did he miss it? Somebody tell me. Four times. We do that in sin. I'm going to tell you. Now you're looking at me sort of funny, but you'll get, you'll get there. Hang on here with me. The point is... If you give yourself an out, if you give yourself an out, if you minimize your sin by saying, well, it's a mistake and everybody makes mistakes, I'm going to tell you something right now. You're not going to be victorious in, with sin in your life, over sin in your life. Are you listening to me, yes or no? Not talking about perfection here, but I'm talking about trying to fight like a dog and do as good as you can. Amen? Say. All right? So sin is not a mistake. It's a missed shot. That's just a, that's a, that's a terminology that I use. Sin isn't a mistake. <laughs> Did you have an intention of, of hitting the target? Most times when we sin, we never had to, When you lie, you never had the intention of telling the truth. You lied because you knew you were going to lie. Is that true? Yes or no? Yes or no? Well, that's a mistake. No, you got caught. Do you understand? Yes or no? I mean, this is elementary here. No wonder kids are screwed up today what we teach them. You know what I'm saying? I spoke to the football team this week. Walked right out on the field, 50-yard line, because I helped coach out there. And uh, I never really talk like this. I said, guys, I don't normally do this, but I want to tell you something. Every one of y'all sinners, and me too. And I said, it's because, and I said, stop saying that you just made a mistake. Would y'all do that? Can we be leaders like that out here at this high school? Say. And I said, and translate that into football. 
when you miss a tackle, don't call it a mistake. Why don't you take ownership of it? You knew how to tackle and you just didn't do it. When the ball was in your hands, you had it right there, you didn't catch it. Why? It was your fault. Well, my fault you didn't catch the ball. Take responsibility for your actions, I told them, in life, but take responsibility for your actions on the field. Yes or no? Say. Why? Because we want to win. Yes or no? Say. All right. Keep looking. So I shot, and I did what? Missed the what? And this will work no matter what it is in your life. You shot, and you missed the truth. The truth is the truth. And you shot, and you missed it. How about this one? I shot, and I missed the target. I missed doing the what? There's a right way and there's a what? Yeah. And you shot and you missed hitting the right thing and you did the what? Is that a mistake? No, it's a missed shot. Okay? Not trying to argue. I'm trying to help you in your thinking. Y'all listening or not? Have I lost you? Okay. Now here's what I found. Mistake seems to only really work when we talk about sin. Here's what I mean. We screw up, we make wrong decisions, we sin, but you know, yeah, but I made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. It doesn't work in basketball. The Spurs last year played the Heat, is that right? I don't think the Heat went into the press conference and said, well, we made a mistake. No, you lost, you lost. Do you understand? Say, spell it right, you don't have the trophy. Okay? The heat do. Okay? Is that how it works? Say. How about this? Doesn't work in baseball. Ask the Rays. Ask the Rays. Well, no, we made a mistake. Hey, the guy in the outfield the other night, you saw game one in the outfield the other night, the, the right fielder, he's a rookie, 22 years old, he's in the outfield, and uh, big old Ortiz hits the ball. It ain't out of the park. It's still in the park, son. You can catch this ball because it's in the park, okay? What's he do? Center fielder's coming for the ball. Right fielder's going for the ball. He waves off the center fielder. The ball's right here. He goes on like this, thinking the guy he waved off is going to catch the ball. No, son, you done waved him off. He's over there. Well, that was a mistake. No, that was a missed catch, and they lost the ball game because of it because it was all downhill after that. You understand, yes or no? I'm trying to make a point. Football. Who that fun? Coach Sorry made a mistake. Well, I'm sorry. We're on the bus home. It's over now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How about golf? Can you see Tiger Woods? Can you see Tiger Woods do this? The game's on the line. He makes the putt. He wins. He misses the putt. Can you see some guy walking up to Tiger Woods and go, you know, that's a really good putt. It was just a mistake. Tiger would probably take a club and beat that guy. He puts that much pressure on himself. But if you ask him, what was that sleeping around with all those women, he might call that a mistake. Yes or no? Point made? Not trying to get on to you or get on to me, guys. I'm trying to say, I think if we can approach sin and fighting sin in our life, and let's call it what it is, and deal with it as our own responsibility, we might do a better job at being victorious in our life. Yes or no? That's what this whole thing's about. Now that's the goal right there, okay, to hit. But sin is I shot and I missed, okay? Keep looking. You want to fight the battle? Then what? Own it. Now the people that I've seen in my life and in my own personal struggles in my own life, the best way I've moved forward in my life is to be able to own or take responsibility. Amen? I did it. I did it. Amen? No what? No mistake about it. Y'all cool so far or you feel beat up on? Aren't you glad you're not Tiger? That mentioned your name. Anyway. Anyway. Keep looking. Wow. Here's the story today. I hope you haven't gone to sleep on me. Here's the story today. King David. King David. Here's our story to help us. He was a man after God's own heart. I didn't say that. That's what God said about him. He's a man after my heart. You can't get any better than that, can you say? 
a man after God's own heart. He was a mighty warrior. So if we're talking about fighting, let's go to a mighty warrior and let's find out how he did. He also, say this with me, he was a what? Can you name one guy he shot and killed? Someone name it. And what did he kill him with? Yeah, slingshot. Yeah, he even, he even killed the giant Goliath over a nine-foot-tall sucker. He killed him with a slingshot. So was he pretty good? Oh, yeah. Okay? So let's learn from him today. He shot and he hit what? He shot and he hit the target. Bullseye. Bang. Right there. David. David. But we want to look at a little something in his life. And it's in the Word to help us, guys. Okay? And I was thinking about this story I'm about to tell you. It's going to talk about David's sin. And it's funny because God's omniscient, isn't He? It's funny. He can't even remember it. But He put it in the Bible for you and me to read. Isn't that cool? Say. So it's there for our learning. So let's learn from the king in the most epic battle of his life, King David. Are you all ready? What was that battle? The fight with who? How many would agree with that? Let's go ahead and raise your hand with me if you agree with me. Some of the tardiest fights you've ever had has been with you. <laughs> yeah, right there. Boy, I'm, I, it's me, oh Lord, me, oh Lord, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen? Come on. Let's learn today. What can we learn? I've put some words on the screen if you uh, can stay with the same sound, you might can remember this and take it with you when you go. Might be good. You might can pull out these old stones later and shoot back. Amen? Come on. Here we go. Here's our first word in the story of David. Say that word with me. Can you say it loud? Second Samuel. I'm not going to have all the Scripture because it's too much. It came to pass after the year was expired. At the time when what? Kings go forth to that David sent his general and his servants with him and all of Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But, say it with me, David stayed at home. Our first word is stayed in this story. Was David where David was supposed to be? No. Kings go to battle. That's where David should have been. That's point one in this message. Stayed. Was David where he was supposed to be, yes or no? No. That should be a good lesson if we're going to learn how to fight sin. Yes or no? Say. Next word. Oh, say that one with me. Played. What was the first word? Second word was what? Played. So stayed, played. So he's at home, right? Is he supposed to be at home or out on the battlefield? Absolutely. So he's home, and it came to pass in the evening, David arose from off his bed, and he walked upon the roof. Because the king's place is a nice place. It's high. He walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof... He saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very what? Beautiful to look upon. So our second word is what? Played. So he's up on the roof doing what? Playing. Okay? Is it a mistake he's up there playing? Okay? We're just walking the story along. So, number one, he stayed. Number two, he played. Number three, he what? Craved. Verse 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Who's that beautiful naked woman down there washing herself? And one said, it's Bathsheba. The daughter of Eliam. Uh-oh, how about this? The wife of Uriah the Hittite. Oh, he just made a mistake. I'm not seeing mistake. Are you seeing mistake or am I missing it? Say. He asked the question. He got the, the, the answer, right? 
But something's happening now inside of David. There's a battle going on. Stayed, went to played, went to craved. And here's where it's headed right now. Laid. That's the word. It's what happened. And David sent the messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he what? Lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. Now, wasn't that convenient for him? And she returned to her house. Had sex. Okay? Not trying to be ugly. Is this in the Bible? Yes or no? What's our purpose today? To pick on King David? No. Our purpose is today to help us fight sin better. Should we call sin a mistake in our life? Or take ownership for it? Ownership. And I'm talking to me today. I'm talking to me. I'm not really, I'm preaching, but it's just to me, guys. So, I'm going to lose all these words, but I'm going to keep trying. Here, stayed, played, craved, laid. How about this one? Say that with me. Betrayed. Are y'all awake? You're alive? Betrayed. And David sent to Joab, the general, and said, send me who? Uriah the Hittite, because he was one of his soldiers. He was a soldier in the king's army. Her husband was a soldier fighting for the king. And David asked the general to send him home. And you can read the story for yourself. Well, here's how it goes. David brings Uriah home under the guise of trying to find out how's the war going. This is a man after God's own heart. So if a man after God's own heart can sin and really fall, can we? Yes or no? Absolutely, guys. And so he asked Uriah, you know, how's the war going? He says, you know, tells him how it's going. And then he says, why don't you go home and here's some food, a beautiful king's feast. You go on down there and why don't you go ahead and spend some time with your wife since you're home and just enjoy your good wife. Because David's trying to cover up something. He's trying to cover up that she's pregnant. You understand? Yes or no? And so bringing him home, now betraying this good soldier. And so the good soldier being the good soldier that he is, he goes home and he doesn't sleep with her. He actually sleeps outside. David tries even to get him drunk on another occasion. Get him intoxicated. What drunk man don't want to go have sex with his wife? Say, I'm sorry. This is the Bible. That's what David thought. And you know what? You know one didn't. This good soldier. This good soldier wouldn't do that. While his guys are on the battlefield, he's going to be at home, he said, you know, enjoying my wife. It's not happening. Not when they're giving their life on the line. I've got to be back where I've got to go. So David betrayed him. He betrayed his friend, his soldier. Here's our next word. Say it with me. What are they? Stayed, played, craved, laid, betrayed, and now what? Slayed. David wrote, gave it, actually he wrote a letter, and he gave the letter to who? Uriah to take to the general. Is that low or what? Is that pretty low, yes or no? Had a letter in his hand, going to the general, and the letter said, put Uriah in the hottest part of the battle where men are being killed. And then pull back from him when you get there. So he had him killed. He wrote in the letter saying, set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest part of the battle and retire or retreat from him that he may what? And die. Had Uriah done anything wrong? No. Who's sinning here? That, or is that a mistake? No, that's, that's a pretty bad shot, isn't it? So, he was killed. Uriah is dead. Now I want you to look. Here's what happens. Keep going. How is this helping me, Pastor? Well, this is us in this story. We, we sin. We, we're just trying to learn from this guy. I mean, you're a man after God's own heart. You're a great marksman. How would you do that? I think we're relating some of us. I mean, you know, we sin is, might not be the same stuff, but we do this. Yes or no? Sure we do. What's the next one? 
Say that. Now, we all do that, don't we? Say, come on. Charade. Charade. It's a charade. David's playing a game. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. <laughs> what morning? M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. After she cried the death of her husband, he fetches her to become his wife and to bear the son. But here's the charade, guys, about sin. Does God forgive our sin when we confess? Yes. Do we have to be sincere? Absolutely. He actually has a word called repent. He says we need to turn from that and turn to him. Is that what the Scriptures teach? Absolutely. Okay? Here's the problem. David's doing none of that. And guess what this whole thing did? Read that last part with me. But, say it with me, the, does that say mistake? But the thing that David what? Had done displeased to the Lord. So it's a charade. So let's review. Stayed, played. I'm getting there. Craved, laid. What? But y'all know it better than I do. Betrayed, slayed. But it's all a big what? Charade. You know why people, a lot of people would say they don't come to church? Because of Christians whose life is a charade. Do you know that? Did you, that'd be the number one answer. There. They would say this. They'd say it in these terms. I don't go to church for the church because the church is full of hypocrites. I didn't even have to tell you what to say. This fight of spiting sin in our life is good for us, but it's also good for others. It's a fight that's worth having. Fighting to do the right thing is a fight that's worth, worth having, guys. I can't have the fight for you. I'm busy fighting for mine. You understand? Okay? So we're learning from this guy. So charade. Well, well, well. The thing that's the problem was the last part of that verse. The thing that David had what? Done displeased to the Lord. Do you think he's displeased with us when the things we do say? Sure he is. Okay? So let's look at it. The story keeps going. But now we're going to pick it up. Say that with me. Tirade. Tirade. But I want you to see, it's not God pitching the fit here and getting angry. Second Samuel 12. And the Lord, because he's displeased, sent Nathan unto David. Now Nathan was the prophet of God. And Nathan came unto David and said unto him, David, I'd like to tell you a little story. Story time with the preacher. There were two men in one city the one was rich, the other was poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. The poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his kids. It ate of his own meat. Sounds like Oreo. My dog. Okay? It ate of his own meat. It drank of his own cup. This little lamb grew up right in the house with the kids. Lay in his bosom. Slept in the bed. And was unto him as a what? Daughter. This man loved that little lamb. He loved that little lamb. David, are you listening? And there came a traveler unto the rich man. And he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd and to dress it for that wayfaring man that was hungry that had come to, to visit him. But he took which lamb? The poor man's lamb. 
and slit its throat. And cleaned it and dressed it up and cooked it and gave it to the strange man that was traveling by. Tyrade. Say Tyrade. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man in the story. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man that has done this thing shall what? Surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold. One, two, three, four, fourfold. Because he did this thing because he had no what? Pity. Boy, did he ever fly into a tirade over just a story, say. How are we learning to fight our battle, Pastor? You've lost me. Here we go. How easy it is to see the sin of others and overlook our own sin. Say that with me. How easy it is to see the sin of and overlook our own what? That's worth saying again, guys, because that's the problem. Here we go. How easy it is to see the sin of and overlook our own sin. He flew into a tirade. Keep looking. I'm going to tell you something. When you overlook your sin and you look at the sin of others, I'm going to tell you something. You're drinking Kool-Aid is what you're doing. Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid. You think God's impressed? Say, when we judge other folk and don't look at ourselves. Yes or no? Say. Or you think God's down and going, them people that are drinking the Kool-Aid right there, that is crazy, those people. Amen? Say. So let's review. Stayed, played, craved, laid, betrayed, slayed. It's all a big charade. And then he flies into a tirade because he's been drinking the Kool-Aid. Are you all right? Keep looking. Hello, hello, grenade, grenade. What am I talking about? And Nathan said to him, the prophet, the preacher, you the man in the story. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, You're the man that did that. Here's what God says. I anointed you king over Israel. David, I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house, your master's wives into your bosom. I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And I love this part from God. And if that had been too little, I would have moreover given unto you such and such and such things. I would have blessed you and I would have helped you and I would have given to you whatever you wanted, man. Wherefore have you despised the commandment of the Lord? Did, did he call it a mistake? Say. He uses harder words than I use. Much harder. Wherefore have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do this what? Evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You did it. You've taken his wife to be your wife. You've killed him by using the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, David, God speaking through the prophet, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me. And you've taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house. I will take your wives before thine eyes. I will give them unto your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. Pure daylight. Everybody will see it. For thou didst secretly, but I will do this thing before all of Israel and before the sun. Is that a grenade that went off, or did I just the only one that felt the uh, rumbling here in the room? Now here's the choice we have. We can either fight this thing called sin, or we can choose a path like this, and one day have our life blown up. Amen? Say, come on, guys. 
We have a choice. It's not a miss what? A mistake, guys. Yeah, we all sin and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. The message isn't about perfection today. It's about fighting. 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 Can we fight? Say. Fight that battle that rages. I have it. It's a, it's a tough fight. Whew. I lose many times. You hear me? Yes or no? Does that mean because I lose I should quit fighting? No, I'm going to keep fighting, right? That's my challenge to you today. We're almost done. After the grenade went off, the word I came up with, best I could do, wade. Wade. And David said unto Nathan, he felt, David at this point had not felt the pressure and the weight of what he had done. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, look at this, isn't this a crazy thing? The Lord hath put away your sin. How good is that? Can we praise the Lord for that right? Come on, let's go right there. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> the Lord hath put away your sin, and you shall not what? Under the law should David have died. Adultery and what else? Murder, both. How be it, how be it, because sin is not a mistake, it's a missed shot, and when you shot and miss, other people get shot and hurt, including you and others many times. How be it, because by this deed you hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to what? The child also that is born unto you shall die. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him what that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not even hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself? He's already all messed up over something that not everybody knows about, probably. He's all messed up. How is he going to be super messed up and vexed if we tell him now that the child is dead? Wow. He felt the weight of it all, didn't he? Say, y'all with me so far? We're not far away from the end. I know you're glad. Hang on. Would you say that with me? Pray. Wow. We're learning from the king how to fight the battle. Up to this point, it's not been a good lesson, right? But now we see that he, he, he owns his sin. It's weighed him down. He's repented. And I want you to see this, what he did. He prayed. He prayed to the Lord. This is something I do often, and I need to do it more. Read Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. If you're a sinner, this is a good psalm to read. <laughs> I am, so I do. Here we go. Have mercy upon me, O God, David writing. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I what? Acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever what? Before me. He knows what he did. He knows it was not a mistake. The baby's dead. A lot of other things is going to happen. It's ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I what? And done this evil in your sight. That thou mightest be justified. You are justified when you speak and you're clear when you judge me. I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you desire what? Truth where? In the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know what? Wisdom. Purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. I love this part right here. One of my favorite things in the Bible. Read it with me. Wash me, and I shall be what? Whiter than what? Snow. Wow, is that awesome. I love this verse as well. Make me to hear, say it with me, joy and gladness that the, bro that the bones which you have broken 
may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Oh, I love this verse. Say it with me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a what? Right spirit within me. Isn't this good? We're talking about fighting the battle. Cast me not away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore. I love this too. Unto me, sit with me, the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with a what? Free spirit. That I will teach transgressors the ways. Now is that what David's been doing this morning? He ain't even here. Sure, he's been teaching. That I will teach transgressors the way. And sinners shall be converted unto you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open up my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desires not, you desire not what? Sacrifice. Else would I give it. You don't delight in a burnt offering. So what did David do? He what? He prayed. Amen. Almost done. David did what he could after he did what he had done. I know that's crazy English, but say it with me. David did what he could after he did what he had done. Could David go back and right every wrong? No. No. Nor can you, nor can I. Sometimes we can go and we can help and we can try. But for the most part, David did what he could after he did what he had done. What did he do? Say it with me. He admitted it. Next one, he what? He took responsibility. Number three, he what? He pled for God's mercy. Are you getting any help in fighting this battle today? That's my goal. Not, to, not just, but it's the Bible. We're trying to teach the Bible at the same time. Here's the last, here's, we're almost to the end now. <laughs> Forgave. Say that with me. Forgave. So, I'm going to start from the top. Drive you crazy. Stayed, played, craved, laid, betrayed, slayed, charade, tirade, drinking Kool-Aid, grenade, weighed, prayed, and God what? Forgave. Because God is omniscient. It's a new word. What's the last verse in, of 51.17 that I wanted to read today? The sacrifices of God are not a, a, a lamb or bringing something like that to burn. No. The sacrifices of God are what? A broken spirit. I love this last part. A broken and a contrite heart. I love this part. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. So we've been learning today how to fight the battle. The message is over. Here's the last word. Paid. And I'm not talking about the price Jesus paid. That's understood. He died on the cross. He died for our sins. You confess, He forgives. But when we sin, there is a price so often that it's going to be paid. There are what? What was David's consequences? What happened? And we can name them all, but I can name a few. Here's what happened. The baby died. His son Amnon raped his sister Tamar. That's part of the judgment. His son Absalom then kills his brother Amnon. How do you think David's feeling as a father? David's son Absalom revolts against the king and forces David out of Jerusalem and out of the kingdom. David's son Absalom was killed by David's general Joab with three darts to the heart. 
Wow. My question is, is the battle against sin worth fighting? Yes or no? We've got to think so, guys, because there are consequences to our actions. Does that make sense? So fight with everything in you. Fight. 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 And when you've done everything you can, fight some more. Amen? Come on. Fight. What did I learn today, preacher? Don't make the mistake of calling sin a what? You're going to lose right out of the gate if you have that kind of thinking. Number two, own it and say, I shot and I missed. Look at your own sin when? First, admit it. Take responsibility for it. Plead for God's mercy. No, there will be what? Consequences. Guys, I wish I had better news for you. But it's a battle. Fighting sin is a battle we must fight. Okay? Appreciate you listening today. Amen. Let's praise the Lord for His Word. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Word of God today. Woo! Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.